Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks to Colin and Aaron for this uh, invitation to present at this Drill Safe Innovation Forum. I must admit, I'm 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 not a safety expert in any way, and uh, and I don't even know um, everything about drilling. But what I do understand is is systems thinking. So I'm going to apply my systems thinking knowledge, and I've really entitled my presentation "Safety as Part of the System." Um. And if you have a look at it, it's not just about individual procedures, events, or functions, but safety is part of the overall way that systems work. Um, and I'll reference this directly to mining. And I've, I've really thought through how systems thinking and safety integrate from a mining perspective. So here's an example of a system. Um, it's a complex mining system. It's got operational planning linked to all the execution activities. In this example, drilling, blasting, loading, hauling crushing processing and I and generating some kind of output and, and value um, and then interacting with the system is the resources the people the methods equipment and the procedures so as a starting point if you had a complex system um, there are probably two different forces pushing on the system on the left hand side we've got safety which is pushing down and saying um, we've got safety stakeholders, we've got issues around liability, um, fears of liability, zero harm, got all the procedures, the critical controls, and, it, and in some ways it's seen as limiting performance. Um, on the other side of the, um, of the scale, you've really also got stakeholders who want return on investment, so now you've got performance pressures pushing on the system, they want to maximize ROI, you've got capital constraints limiting the system's performance um, you've got pressure to reduce costs or even to reduce headcount so if you think about it now you've got these two counter forces that need to be kept in balance between critical safety aspects and the ability for this operation to perform and importantly the system is complex it has external systems pressures there are certain cultures within the system and there's human behavior that impacts impacts both the left and right hand side of the scale so I'm going to go into a little bit of examples of how I've thought about it and how I've applied it. So you now take this mining system and I've built in all the, the factors that are impacting, all the system pressures that have been put onto the system. So let's start on the very right hand side. And what you've got is you've got performance pressure. That performance pressure has been, um, been set by, by the shareholders, by the executive, by the board. Or even what the market demand is. And here we've got expectations of performance. We've got demands around achieving certain returns and investment. And there might even be a culture of performance. Which says you perform beyond anything else. So that puts system pressure on performance. Now if you move around um, anti-clockwise. The next thing is performance variability. Now that system has inherent variability in it. Now if you think about it. You've now got pressures on a daily basis to meet certain budgets, targets, but that system has inherent what we call common variation. Um, and now that common variation starts putting people on the on under pressure because that variability in performance is pushed down on them straight away because we've got to achieve certain performance target, but yet some days we are below our budget because there is variability in that performance. Plus there's material variability. So now we've got pressure being put on around performance but that system inherently has variability in it which means you will take shortcuts for example because potentially you're sitting with massive performance expectations if you carry on moving around you've got resources and constraints so so now we've got inherent system variability we've got performance pressures being put on the business which means maybe we don't have sufficient capital to put the right resources into the system in terms of people, equipment, uh, maybe even time, which means we're doing the job without the right equipment, the right methods. We're doing jobs without sufficient people, which means we have to take shortcuts. I've heard of instances when there's massive pressure to do a certain piece of asset maintenance and we've got to still fill in now this checklist. So somebody does the checklist while somebody else quickly goes and starts the job and that inherently creates risk. Um, from a safety perspective and an incident, and there might not be time. You've got a lot of things to do which are safety related, but you still got performance targets. So the resources and constraints in the system, again, have an impact on safety. 
let's carry on around. We've got legislation which says you have to fill in certain procedures. And we, we have probably over proceduralized everything with the perception that we reduced safety um, or, or reduced the impact of events and improved safety. But, you know, we've got all the checklist boxes that we have to fill in, which in a lot of instances, these big massive forms that have lots of tick boxes and people just do the tick boxes for the sake of the tick boxes. Um, there are issues around fear because there are liabilities from a legislative pers perspective and appointments of who's accountable if somebody gets hurt or or um, God forbid, um, killed in an operation. And you've got external government pressures as well in terms of uh, safety targets, in terms of um, royalties, all that, which is again, putting pressure on the system. Then any system has what's called emergent events. Things do break down. Things just emerge. So suddenly equipment has, break, has broken down. We've got to respond to that emergency. Fall of ground. And um, in a lot of instances, it's maybe not even um, written into procedures. You have to make a split-second decision of what to do. And I, I think there we've there's a big opportunity to start bringing in um, virtual reality and simulation because, you know, a pilot will have simulated certain events in an aeroplane hundreds of times. So when it happens, he intuitively knows what to do. And I think that's where in mining, you know, if some emergent event happens, and somebody reacts, they need to do the, the right thing. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there. But again, that puts pressure on the system. We've then got trade-offs. So you have to make trade-offs in your day. You've got a system. It needs to perform. It's got certain variability. It's got rest constraints and resource constraints, obviously because of capital and time. And now you've got to make trade-offs around meat and production targets versus walk working safely. All the time applying to different aspects of the job. Um, and then again, re resources in terms of where they're going to work and what they're going to do. If you carry on going around the the um, the system and, and we look at culture, yeah, openness, trust, fairness um, is important. Um, you know, in the mining industry currently, if somebody's made a mistake or there's been a safety incident, sometimes it's kept um, secret because of fears around liability. Also, there are, are quite major lost time injury um Targets. So sometimes something happens and it doesn't get reported because it will impact negatively on our performance target. So you've got peer pressure. Um, I've got an interesting um, example of a workshop where somebody raised a safety issue and um, which meant that potentially that month the team wouldn't meet their production targets. So he was really shouted down after the meeting by his peers because they may not get their bonuses. So um, his view was, well, next time I'm not going to raise an issue because look at how I've been uh, sort of shunned in terms of raising it. So there's got to be a, a open culture that each person's looking after them, or of other person than themselves, not at the expense of safety for production. Tolerance of risk. I mean, do we tolerate risk? I mean, if you're a, dry, if you're a passenger in a car and someone's driving and that person overtakes on a, on a white, solid white line, do you raise it or just tolerate it? If they overtake on a blind rise, do you raise something? And then even values, you know, um, and that's quite an important thing. You know, if somebody is maybe um, values values money more than themselves or values money more than people, um, you know, they make certain trade-offs that, that may impact safety. So all of the, and this is not all of them, this is just some of the, the, the things that I would say impact the system or, or put pressure on the system in terms of performance. Um, and it's not comprehensive, but it's 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 my view of, of how it all fits it fits together. So really, I think what's important, even the language we use, you know, we sit in a production meeting and safety is maybe discussed in the first 10 minutes of the meeting and then we're done with safety and now it's all about production. Um, and the language needs to be changed. I mean, really, we should be talking about safe production. There shouldn't be a safety briefing at the first, at the beginning of the meeting. We should be talking about safe production as the language we ask people. So if the production manager is asking his team, how they're doing, um, it should be, have you produced safe production today? So importantly, we've got management managing the system. And we need to understand the system and how it interacts with the people and how the people interact with it. So if you have a look at on the left-hand side, you're saying it's a whole bunch of people that are interacting with the system. They've got certain values, trade-offs, how they communicate. Uh, management's approach, trash openness and fairness. There's the peer pressures, all the things we already spoke about. And then we have the system, and the system now impacts, 
the overall way that system works and the people. Um, what's the performance potential of the system? Have we set a, a performance target that's putting everyone under massive pressure beyond what that system's capability is? How do we maximize flow out of that system? Um, what are the constraints in the system and how is it impacting performance and then the trade-offs that we're making? What are the resources required to actually run that system correctly? Also, expert knowledge, and I think that's something that's very much not um, leverage enough. There are experts who understand that system and they understand the safety implications. And often as management, we write procedures um, that we really need the input knowledge around being able to do it effectively. What are the methods and processes and what equipment do we use to actually effectively manage that system? I mean, if you think about it, systems uh, safety shouldn't be seen as a separate, a separate function. It is inherent in the overall system of how it works. Um, and I think that's critical for the mining industry to understand. Um, yeah, so that was a very quick presentation, but um, thank you very much to, um, to the team for letting me present. Um, also, if you are interested, there's a knowledge portal that we've built called Mindshare. If you go to www.mindforfuture.co, you can have a lot of look at a lot of presentations that have been done. And feel free to pop me an email or give me a phone call if you'd like to discuss further. Thank you very much.